So let's talk a little bit about AMC and AMC's recent ability to sell about $230 million worth of shares, potentially to go on the offensive and make acquisitions, which let's face it is probably what they should be doing if they really want to survive into the future. And I'll also talk about the fact that the purchaser of these shares, Mudra Capital, turned around and sold the shares pretty much immediately, saying that they were overvalued. So I'm going to give you a bit of an idea about what's going on there and why these types of things are happening. Now, if you have any thoughts about AMC or meme stocks in general, let me know those in the comments below, because it'd be interesting to hear your perspective on what exactly is happening with this share sale. But nevertheless, I have a background in finance with a PhD in finance, so I follow these things pretty closely. All right, so let's have a little bit of a look at what exactly has happened here. So firstly, at the risk of belaboring the point, we can first look at AMC's share price. It is at an all time high, being well, really, really high at around $32 per share. This in fact is higher than Mudrick Capital paid for the shares at $27.12, which I'll get to in a second. Now here I have the most recent one day price, but if we just look at year to date, it's skyrocketed from $1.98 all the way up to $32. If you look at the past year, so one year of data, same basic story here. So we're seeing it increasing by about a thousand percent or thereabouts. So it has been pretty insane, the sheer increase in share price. So that's pretty much the background to what's happening. And it is unsurprising, therefore, that AMC would want to look at raising capital given this historic share price, i.e. there's the old Dilbert cartoon that a company might want to go out and use its equity to buy something that has real value, i.e. they'll use their overhyped, overpriced equity to raise money, go out and make an acquisition, and then create value from it. So what then is happening with the share sale that they went and did? Well, this has been, I guess, widely talked about, where it says here in the market title here, a huge day for meme stocks sees Mudrick reportedly dump AMC stock and Roaring Kitty returns to rally GameStop diehards. So here we've got a few stories going on, but I'm most interested here in AMC, where it says an extended holiday hiatus hasn't stopped the meme stock mo mojo, with GameStop and AMC Entertainment registering stellar returns to start June, June sending supporters of the social media-driven assets into a frenzy on Tuesday. Things kicked, kicked off on a bullish note on Tuesday, after AMC sold 8.5 million shares of common stock for $230 million to Mudrick Capital Management, sending shares soaring. Despite the apparent dilution, as the move was interpreted as the theater chain CEO, uh, CEO's direct appeal to investors to blah, 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 basically they were going to try out and do acquisitions. So if we have a look at the share price again, go to the most recent one day, possibly the most recent five days might be a little bit more informative, what we can see is a consistent trend upwards as the shares had spiked and it continued to trend positively and in a positive direction following this information. So that's pretty much what had happened in terms of the announcement. So why then did they sell these shares? Well, it appears they sold these shares in order to make acquisitions. Now, precisely what they intend to acquire remains to be seen because announcing that you were going to go out and make acquisitions obviously has the possible impact that the potential targets of the company will increase in price in anticipation of a takeover occurring and in anticipation of a takeover premium being received. So it isn't always the best idea to go and flag what your targets are going to be. Nevertheless, when you're raising money, it is generally good to state to the market why you are raising the money. Because if you just go out and raise cash, the market might think you might spend it willy nilly and in a stupid way, Whereas at least flagging what you intend to do with it is generally seen as a positive signal or at least a less negative signal. Uh, so what might they acquire? Well, they're currently pretty much a cinema chain. Now they could either be banking on one of two things. Either one, they will need to pivot from cinema chains into other things. And or two, they would be expecting that cinemas might recover into the future. If they feel like they need to pivot, they'd probably be looking more into the online space. Now, clearly there's a lot of streaming services out there at the moment. They might potentially try to acquire a small streaming service and try to build that up. Uh, so there's a few small streaming services, many of which don't have that much traction, but still with the $230 million, they can make a fair dent. 
uh, in acquiring a stake in a streaming service or acquiring a whole streaming service. But let's face it, they're not going out and acquiring HBO. They're not going out and acquiring Disney Plus. They're not going out and acquiring Netflix. They don't have enough money to do that. So they'd really need to set their sites smaller or acquire a partial stake in order to pivot if that's what they're really trying to do. Otherwise, they could try to diversify a little bit away from what they're currently doing. And that would be potentially risky because they don't necessarily have the expertise to pivot in that direction. So they could try to do that, or they could try to acquire some startups, broadly speaking, in technology related spaces. So as an example of one type company, and it is a direct pivot away from what they're doing, but they might look at companies like things that are just leaping to the top of my mind. Companies like ShotStack, which are primarily within the advertising type space, which are really tiny startup companies. Those are the types of things they might try to acquire piecemeal and build a portfolio of smaller tech companies, maybe in the advertising space, in order to try to diversify their portfolio. The other possibility is they perceive that cinemas are going to recover. If they perceive cinemas are going to recover, they might try to acquire distressed smaller players. Uh, smaller players that are having difficulty continuing on. And this is very consistent with an industry roll-up type idea, where they might try to acquire these smaller players who are trading at very low valuations due to the nature of the market. Put differently, AMC might realize, well, we were a meme stock. Everyone saw us at $1.98, so bought into our shares. But there are other neglected companies that haven't achieved this, and or other unlisted companies that haven't achieved this. So they might be going out and hunting for their own equivalent of a meme stock that they might go out and buy. That's another possibility. So in any case, that seems to be why they're doing the capital raising, and it makes perfect sense given the historic highs that AMC has been on. And I would, I'm not surprised, to be totally honest. I kind of reflect what GameStop did as well. So it makes a lot of sense, logically speaking. However, Mudrick turned around and sold the shares. So Bloomberg has reported that Mudrick Capital sells entire AMC stake, calling the shares overvalued i.e. they got in at $27.12 and they sold out presumably at a higher price. Given that the shares increased in value and had been trading above $30, they might have banked a small profit per share on this. Not totally clear at this point in time exactly what they made from it, but still probably a decent return. So it says here, Woodrick Capital sold all of its shares in AMC Entertainment as of Tuesday. The same day, the movie theater chain disclosed that the investment firm had bought $230 million of fresh shares to bolster its finances, according to a person with knowledge of the matter. Then it says, Mudrick no longer holds any AMC shares and sold at a profit, the person said, asking not to be identified, discussing a private matter. The firm disposed of its stake after concluding that AMC's stock is overvalued, propped up by a recent wave of day trade enthusiasm, the person said. Now, clearly they would have known this before they bought the shares. So, I mean, if it was overvalued at 30, it was probably overvalued at 27. But still, they probably knew this, and hence why they sold the shares, which makes perfect sense. Again, I personally am a little bit bearish on this. So with that in mind, it's now probably a good time to plug my course and my book on corporate valuation, which both look at how you might value a company, or at least the basics thereof, and therefore conclude whether or not something is overvalued or undervalued. My book's available from Amazon, and I have online courses as well, both of which I'll link to below. And these could be useful if you want to be able to invest or trade or work out the value of a company, or if you too want to wear a gaudy gold Rolex, there could be courses that are worth checking out for you. And with that in mind, let's jump back into AMC. So that's basically what Mudrick Capital has done here. They have gone out and they've tried to purchase, uh, tried to sell rather the shares. Uh, now, it says here in particular that there was no lockup in relation to the share sale i.e. Mudrick Capital did not need to lock up their shares, i.e. keep them, or i.e. stop selling them for a period of time. So sometimes when there is a capital raising, the purchaser has to refrain from selling the capital for a period of time afterwards. This is oftentimes the case when you've invested in a startup and that startup list on the market. So Mudrick Capital did not need to engage in a lockup here. So they obviously sold the shares, calling it overvalued. Now, this was not particularly well received necessarily in uh, social media with various people calling AMC a shill, etc, etc. In any case, that's pretty much what has happened with Mudrick Capital. So let's now have a little bit of a look at AMC's finances to see exactly what is happening. 
Okay, so here we are with AMC's financials. Now let's have a look at 2020 here. What you can see in 2020 is there was some revenue, but it was significantly lower than that in 2019, i.e. an order of magnitude lower than in 2019, lower than 2018, lower than 2017. What you can see is 17, 18, 90 had remained relatively constant, i.e. they had been around that 5 million or thereabouts mark, which had then significantly declined. Cost of revenue had also declined, however, declined not in a proportionate manner. So gross profit was significantly lower. So we're talking gross profit here being uh, about a quarter of what it was in 2019, maybe a little bit less than a quarter in 2019, which tells us there's a significant diminution in the prospects of this company. Now, furthermore, we also have a look at SGNA, which has remained constant. So when we go all the way down to net income, Let's have a look at net income. Now, net income is dire. Net income had been oscillating between positive and negative. Now, it looked like there was maybe some positives back in, was that 2018? Yep, 2018. But it was then negative again in 2019, and then super negative during 2020. A negative 4.6 million here, which basically tells us that they need to stage a massive recovery in order for the firm's share price to be maintained. Now, this is an issue. The reason I say it's an issue is we're currently at an all-time high share price, right? And the net income is at an all-time low. So let's go back to the share price and see what this basically means. So if we go back to the chart, we can basically have a look at what's happening to their share price and see how this compares over time. Now, it will emerge that while they are at an all-time high share price-wise, this is an issue. So let's go for the past five years share price. So the past five years, all time high was probably overstating it. Uh, a high for the past basically four years. So four year high is probably what I should have said instead. But in any case, we've got a very high share price. It is above that, even back here. And back here was, if we just have a look at the date, back here was in 2018 and end of 2017. So what you're seeing is you're currently trading in a share price that is above that in 2017, 2018. That is despite the net income being significantly lower, i.e. 10 times worse than it was back then, but the share price is higher. Now, this is weird. It's weird because the share price should be the present value of all future earnings the firm is going to get, discounted back at the relevant cost of capital. Again, to plug my own ebook and my course, I discuss these as well. So in any case, we've got a significantly worse revenue, a significantly worse net income, but the share price is very high. This is really why Mudrick is likely to have concluded that AMC was overvalued and why AMC should therefore be sold by Mudrick. So that's pretty much, it appears, what had happened here. So that's pretty much what's happened with AMC in a nutshell. They sold a lot of shares in order to go out and make an acquisition, and that is understandable given their current share price. However, sophisticated investors have remarked that they believe that the share price to be overvalued. Now, I personally am partial to their view on this. Now, this is not investment advice, but I can generally see where they're coming from, because the share price has increased at the same time as earnings have significantly tanked. And while that significant tanking in earnings is in part temporary and in part a short-term blip, it's not going to recover immediately. AMC is not going to get better earnings in 2021, 2022 than it had in 2019, at least in my opinion. I don't see how that would even be possible because cinemas haven't even opened up fully yet. And there's been a uh, significant shift toward online viewing. So it isn't totally clear how they're going to beat what they were doing in 2018, 2019. So I have quite a degree of sympathy with Mudrick Capital's position here. But if you think I'm wrong, or if you have any thoughts about AMC, let me know those in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks a lot for listening into this video, and I hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.